Hi. Well, guess what? A video was long overdue. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I promised you a long time ago and I was a bad girl. I was busy, 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 writing, writing, writing. But this is my second novel. Here. Whoa. Look, look, look. It's a novel. It's a real book. Ah, 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 ah. I can bite it. I can bite it. I can hug it. I can hug it. I can kiss it. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Because it's so awesome when you write a book and then you can hold it in your hands. You're like, wow, it's real. I wrote a book. Well, it's my second book. My first was a trilogy. It had three books. Three. One, two, three. Um, so you can say this is my fourth book. But it's not really because to me it's only number two. Because the first one got really long and then I had to cut it up into pieces. And um, anyway, you don't want to know. So, oh, and this is my room. If you haven't seen it, it's new. So I want to get really, really scared when I'm writing or when I'm publishing and then I'm waiting for my readers to tell me if they hate it, hate it, hate it, or they love it. Oh, then I get really, really, really excited. And then I go and I jump on my bed. See? And then I also can hop on my ball because I'm not sitting on the chair, I'm sitting on a ball because it helps my lower back and then my back doesn't hurt and then, you know, it's for good posture. I have good posture. Do I? Do I? Do I? Do I? Ah, anyway. This is Rose Head. It's a story about a rose garden that eats people. And it has a 12 year old girl and a whippet, which is a dog, um, who can talk. And they go on and investigate it. How cool is that? So, let me read from it. And then you tell me how you like it. Oh, you can also buy it on my site. The autographed copy. Here, look. I can sign my little XO, XO. Here, for you. For you, for you, for you. For you. Um, or you can buy it on Amazon or any of those other magnificent places that sell books. So, here we go. Rose Head. Chapter one. If I can find it. The Grim Arrival. Lilith Bloom had a peculiar feeling that the Rose Garden wanted to eat her. She surveyed it through the open car window, unable to look away. The garden seemed to survey her back. It was enormous. Its red blankets surrounded a solitary mansion at the end of Rose Street. Rosenstrasse in German. No other houses stood in sight, only a distant forest. Apart from tires grating on the gravel, it was eerily quiet. Too quiet for a hot summer afternoon. Their rental sedan pulled into the motor court in front of the mansion, joining a long line of cars. A sudden gust of wind washed over Lilith's face. She expected it to smell like roses. Instead, it reeked of rotten sweetness, of something decomposing. Lilith rolled up her window. Panther, she whispered. No answer. Panther Bloom Jr., will you kindly wake up? She shook the black shape curled to her left. The shape yawned, oh, revealing a long tongue and rows of pearly teeth, and then promptly sat up and blinked. It wasn't exactly a dog, not in the most typical sense of how one would describe it. It was a cat in the dog's body. In proper canine terms, it was a whippet. Lilith's pet and only friend. He possessed a unique gift. He talked as Lilith ascertained her parents. Of course, they refused to believe her. Lilith's father, Daniel Bloom, an avid whippet breeder and dog race enthusiast, deemed Panther as the runt of the litter. Too soft-hearted to part with the puppy, he gave it to Lilith last summer for her 12th birthday. Since then, they'd become inseparable, disappearing on long walks in Boston neighborhoods and arriving this fine, sunny day in Berlin. After Lilith Point Blank refused to go anywhere without Panther, especially not to the Bloom family reunion at her grandfather's house. You'd think a herd of elephants died here, 
she whispered. Panther raised a brow. No matter how much Lilith pleaded with him to talk in front of her parents, he viciously disapproved of the idea lest they parade him in some freak show like an otherworldly miracle. Don't look at me like that. I hate it when you don't answer, Lilith said. Loudly enough for her parents to hear, they exchanged a painful glance. Here we are, puppies. Looks like we made the cut, said Daniel Bloom cheerfully, attempting to diffuse the mood. When nervous, he spoke in dog show lingo. Lilith, did you take your pills? said Gabby Bloom as she twisted in the passenger seat and gazed at her daughter through metal rimmed glasses. Her fingers momentarily paused from knitting. Panther studied Lilith. Lilith studied the front seat. I thought we agreed that pills are for sick people, mother. I must assure you that currently, I don't feel sick in the slightest. Don't take that tone with me, Missy. Look at me when I talk to you, I ask you a question. Did you or didn't you? Panther continued to study Lilith. Lilith continued to study the seat. Gabby's lower lip trembled. She looked like a lost squirrel perched on top of a roof, not knowing how she got there or how to get down. Her brown hair could pass for fur standing on end. Lilith, don't be puppish. Answer your mother, Daniel muttered while pausing his, pausing, patting his pockets to look busy. An awkward silence filled the car. I flushed them down the toilet, on the plane, by accident. They're excruciatingly slippery, Lilith said with an innocent expression on her face. She laughed using sophisticated words like excruciatingly to purposefully annoy her mother. You what? Daniel, are you listening? Did you hear what she said? Gabby faced her husband. He squinted at something out the window. I'm sure she didn't mean for it to happen, love. We just crossed the Atlantic, effectively gaining six extra hours. She can skip a day, can't she? For time adjustment purposes. Well, here you have it. An excerpt from Rosehead, my second novel, chapter one, The Grim Arrival. The story about a rose garden that eats people and a girl and a whippet that go and investigate. And with this, till next time, mwah, mwah, as always, XO.